Good morning. I had this brilliant idea of sharing with you some truth that might be a little uncomfortable for some. However, there's some of you that are completely open and receptive to this wisdom and knowledge that could protect you in the future or it could be reinforcing something you may already know. And the truth is everybody knows and has heard it before that nobody gives up about you, right? And the truth is only you really know what's the matter with you. And the only way that you really know that is by checking in with authentic you, right? Like you need to get comfortable with your cells, yourself, your being, right? Know who you are, where you stand, how you feel, right? My personal thing is I very clearly need to like wash and brush my hair or I should brush my teeth, you know? Nobody told me anything and nobody really noticed either right because nobody really had full conscious awareness or care about me neither did Trina right because she didn't know until she truly paid attention to herself her cells her being her experience her life and brought art through creation of her life and how she chose to express and be herself and so yes like I have this new food I like that. I like those. I eat those like a lot. It's it's almost bad. I mean, like I've checked the ingredients, so I've kind of like egotistically justified myself, but there's totally still sugar in here. It says two grams of sugar. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to how to judge that. I'm not really a fan of judgment in general. So this is just my own personal analysis and where I'm personally at. And while some people might feel humiliation that or shame. <laughs> I learned so many things today and there's so many things that I kind of want to share with you now and some things that I want to like plant the seeds later. One of them that's coming to mind is how I just had an amazing conversation with someone that I call Uncle Frank. Uncle Frank is a professional wrestler who I know from the Gypsy crew of Juggalo Championship Wrestling and I've gotten to know his story and hear his heart and his passion and share space and grace and it's just been really really amazing all the different things that step through. <laughs> Excuse me because in my mind I'm kind of um there's some people that like probably can't stop focusing on like that being in my teeth <laughs> now that I pointed it out right but before you probably wouldn't have noticed I mean unless you're extremely attention to detail and like which that can be a good thing purity of thought and mind and body so I'm attempting to purify my entire self and my being and get to know myself and my experience um so what made me think of Uncle Frank that I should tell you is um I think I, I think it was guilt, but it's about I'm looking now at the paper of he calls him he calls them the deadly sins, the six deadly sins, but it's his version of it. It's really cute, okay? It starts out as coulda, woulda, shoulda, guilt, sin, and blame. And he says, anyone not happy either has a combo or one, and it equals an excuse to not accept accountability, a.k.a. responsibility, responding to yourself or your happiness, serving yourself your happiness. You have to give yourself permission to be happy and do what makes you happy and really taking, like, mindful awareness. You know, something else that comes to mind that is important to share with you now is he's always... <laughs> Excuse me, like, I'm like, which version of Frank do I tell you about? So I have a quote here that says, instead of being a reactionary being, like a jail prisoner, right? Prison is full of them, right? So he said, ask any one of them if you thought just five minutes, you know, do you think you would have been sitting here? And he said, that, like, probably a lot of people in there, if they would have just gave themselves permission to have five minutes to really meditate, you know, especially if someone who's harping an answer from you and you're not sure. And if they won't give you five minutes, that might be a red flag. And sometimes it's true. You might not necessarily have a choice. Like, you have to make a decision right now. So you're going to have to really control your own inner compass to kind of just really know yourself and be yourself. But it's kind of an art, right? He was also mentioning that. It's the art of um of life you know like i wish i could give you that analogy you might have to wait for the interview to really hear it out his words because i'm not delivering the message the true way that i had received it but my own words that i took that i that i made from his teaching 
was the art of myself, like the art of my being, like my being is a form of art, like the way that I express myself, the way that I command my presence, the way that I act and the way that I move, the way that I do, you know, the way that spirit moves through me and that I allow it to come and do, you know, and like, I feel like that's um, a trigger for like some people, especially that aren't spiritual or especially that are like kind of like really religious and um, like people who question versus people who have faith and just have all like kind of like a knowing and trust in the, the universe, you could say. Um, I'm like, I don't I'm like, I don't really want to get into that, but I'm not trying to get people to like, I don't want you to shut down your heart is what I'm getting at. And like, and if your heart is kind of shut down, I want you to admit that it's hurt and it's broken so that we can accept and take accountability for it and take care of it. So I'm here to kind of offer that space. And um, I guess the message that I'm beating around the bush though is like, it's never the person, it's what's working through them. I learned that through Fuller Life and my studies with them. And basically that's permitting acknowledgement that it was like <laughs> it's, it's hard to give language of like what that teacher was you know or like what that or like what message I received from the energy that like came from my connections there um like <laughs> like this sounds extreme right that I could go really extremities but the only way that I could paint a picture for you so you to understand would be basically saying like pretend or imagine that some people have like a little devil on their shoulder right and it's telling them hurt yourself hurt people or do this erratic behavior ego ego fear fear right that's fear that's why you want to act like animalistic right and then you have um um, God, this is really, really hard to focus on. <sighs> like, this is like all about that reactionary being thing. And it's this, and then like there's the other shadow or like the light side of it that people could say is like, Archangel Michael is like working through me. He's got my back, you know? It's like, people don't understand like what they're attaching themselves to and like, that they need to go straight to the God source basically and like connect to themselves instead of like trying to attach to all these images and just having all these attachments, you know, because you can draw all these energies to you, but also like you can be pushing back like what is needed for you because you're trying to control and play God yourself. You know, I would call that Q versus G. Q being like all the AI consciousness connected to one, you know, Twitter, all that like being all of that of the hive mind of all the master plan is what I would call it of agenda 21 or just part of the like you could say the divine process or the shadow of the beauty that's in the making um well I can hear the birds singing and that's kind of like my music that I should probably go brush my teeth and start my day and take care of my own personal stuff it's like basically almost 10 30 I got all my stuff in the smoothie thing. I gotta wash this and do that so that I can do what I wanna do because I have to make that investment and take care of myself. And then I have to do things more that show future Trina that I love her, you know? So like maybe you make a mess and the way that you show future you that you love them is by cleaning up the mess now. So that way when you like come back, like it's not all there, you know? You're like, oh, thank God that's taken care of. I have to worry about that because I took care of that. You know, the more of your stuff that you take care of that you've been putting on the back burner, the more you take care of yourself, the more that you're kind of taking care of the whole, right? Like, because if you have a clean space or whatever, right, a clean slate, you have more to work with. There's more clarity, you get more vision, more visuals, right? Working with different sceneries and expressions, but it's up to you to make art with your life and express yourself and open up and be yourself instead of trying to be everything that you're seeing. That's the problem with Q and AI. Like, you're allowing these what you're witnessing through the telephone to really control the way that you're seeing and judging the universe and people just by watching them and you don't even know them you never had a personal conversation and basically you're closing up your heart and your entire life and experience to them because of your unknowing and, and fear so again i love you as always and just know that like this is my personal process too i've been there if i hadn't been there like I don't know anything. That was one of my favorite quotes of his. 
He's like, I don't know anything. All I know is what I've been through. And that's so true for all of us. So, namaste, Jai Bhagwan. Peace. <laughs>